Hey guys, so I'm just gonna give a few minutes for people to jump on here, but since I'm probably gonna be posting this, we're gonna share a story of how God led us together and how everything transpired from that and what transpired from that as well. So I'll just give it a little bit, wait for a few more people to hop on here, and then we'll begin. And he is amazing for doing this. <laughs> Yes, we will do prayer requests and everything at the end, and we'll also do, um, like a little Q&A quick if we have time at the end as well. Okay, so now that there's a few more people on here, um, we're just going to be sharing our story of, like, everything that God has done with us. Like, not our separate testimonies yet, because that will be a whole other, um, video because that would be kind of long, but, um, we're just going to share... Um, everything that kind of happened between us and how God miraculously lined us up and how he's done everything from start to finish in a supernatural and beautiful way. So I'll start here. And um, so we didn't meet in a miraculous way, really. We have known each other our whole lives. Um, we grew up together because our dads were and still are best friends. So we've had the privilege and blessing of knowing each other pretty much since... I've existed. Um, so <laughs> that's really cool. Um, so no cool story there of like, oh, we met this way. Nope. I've always known him, which to me makes it so much more special. Um, because we've seen parts of each other that no one else has just because they haven't known us at that stage in our lives, which is really cool. So, um, and for the comments, I'll be looking at the comments at the end. Um, so feel free to ask questions or say any comments that you want now, and then we'll get back to you at the end of this. Okay. So also while growing up, um, I always had adored him. I had the biggest crush on him and he was actually the first boy that I can remember, um, ever liking at that time. So that's really special. Um, this is my first crush right here. <laughs> so yeah, and then actually, as I was a kid, this is extremely cringy and embarrassing to say, but um, there's like this vivid memory that I have of praying to God uh, that when we got older that I would end up with him. And that is just really special, and it will be even more special in the latter part of this testimony because it actually plays a key role in what happened just a few months ago. So, yeah. Um, but then our lives kind of just got complicated as we grew up you know we both fell into some dark things and just worldly paths and um we ended up not seeing each other for like four years four or five years I hadn't seen him which I would see him at least uh, several times a year up until then um and then when I was 17 so four years ago I saw um his post on Facebook and they were really strange <laughs> um, to say the least, I didn't understand they were dark in nature and they were relating to God, but in a completely twisted and wrong way. And I didn't, I didn't understand this. And I remember my mom seeing it and saying like, oh, that's demonic. Like that's really bad. And that is like blasphemy or, or something like that. And saying that he was possessed. And I'm like, what? And at this time I didn't even really know what I believed in. I had believed in Christ my whole life. Like I was raised in it, but for the first time, and forever, um, I was doubting uh, the existence of God and the existence of Christ just for a lot of reasons. Like, my life was just really bad. I was in a lot of pain, uh, mentally, emotionally speaking, and just everything seemed to be going wrong. And I'm like, God, if you're real, then, like, why is this happening? Like, I just, so many questions I felt like I didn't at that time have answers to and a lot of frustration and no good Christian influence in my life. Um, everyone I knew was pretty much an atheist. Um, that mocked my belief. So I didn't know what to believe. So my mom was like, oh, he's possessed. I'm like, wait, one, Tim? Like, Tim? Like, I grew up with him. You know, I've seen him my whole life. He's never been possessed or anything even close. Um, so I was like, what? And then two, like, is God even real? Like, what does that even mean? So I was extremely curious. And I was like, I want to know um, what is going on. I want to see it firsthand. So I had messaged him and it was a normal conversation. We were just reminiscing on our old times 
And it was going good until like halfway through the conversation. It was like as if someone else had taken over the keyboard and someone else entirely was typing. Like that's how different it was. It was like night and day. Um, it was like Tim and then this thing that wasn't Tim. And I was just really confused, but also intrigued at this point. Um, and you can share from your perspective on that if you want. Yeah, at this time, um, I would say I was uh, at college. Um, I didn't really know. I was confused. I was delusional. So there was like a split part of me. There was a me that I was always as a kid growing up and, um, you know, into a young, young man. But then there's the spiritual side that was slowly taking over. And then by this time that uh, she actually reached out to me, it was a uh, full force. Um, I was riddled with demons. I was in a really, really dark spot. Um, it was affecting every aspect of my life, um, my schoolwork, um, my career, my family. It was getting almost to a head. But then when she reached out, it was as if um, God would almost part the clouds for a second. And I was able to maintain um, like some kind of normalcy. So I was able to uh, see her a few times and she was able to see me. Um, we would start to build a relationship. At this time, like she said, I wasn't. I never viewed her romantically. It was always, you know, a family friend growing up. You know, I was always like looked out for, her in a way. So, but those kind of feelings came along. Those started building up, but it allowed her to see um, a spiritual side, and that was it. As soon as we saw for the first time, I slept over. I left. It was it was like something changed in her. It was like a mission. She like totally came alive. She was opening up the book. She was speaking scripture to me she was trying to get whatever was taking over me to come out it was something that i saw immediately and something you still have now that i adore yeah it was a crazy time um during that because i seeing him in person was something that i could not deny uh spiritually speaking like i was seeing like textbook type possession stuff and it was crazy, and I didn't expect that at all. I expected, okay, you know, maybe some, like, some weird, um, how do I even word this? Just, like, acting a bit off here and there, but I didn't expect what I saw. And what I saw was, like, him, and then kind of, like, he explained something else take over him, which was surreal and then I remember my mom always told me growing up to say like I rebuke you in the name of Jesus and if things got really like bad to say that and I remember saying that and then he would instantly like stop what he was doing and even more than that like he'd be confused about what he was even just saying and be in the state of like wait what like what's going on so this was shocking to me and so not only did I know that the demonic realm was real, but that God was real, but more specifically that Christ was real and that Christ had authority over these things. So because we grew up together, I'd always loved him. I've always adored him and he had always meant so much to me. Um, so I wanted to help him, but I knew that I was in a state that I could not help him. I was actually at my worst point. I had just hit rock bottom. I was just coming out of an addiction and then going into another one. And, um, I was lonely. Like all my friends had dropped me at that point because I was, like I said, I was coming out of an addiction. So I was not the same person that I used to be. And yeah. And then I just jumped into another addiction literally a week uh, after being sober. So, you know, really bad time for me. And I knew I was messed up. So I'm like, okay, how do I help him? But then I'm like, okay, the only thing that's going to work anyway is God. So I started just reading the word more and just trying to get more and more into Christ and understand more about him. Um, and we had really like, it was miraculous what I saw happen with him because it was like a month or two. And then he started being coherent again. He started coming too. And then like a month after that, he started helping me. Like I started doing really bad. And like he said, um, it started getting spiritually dark with me and like then things started jumping on me. I already had plenty of my own demons. I know that, but like things started getting worse um, after all of this. But he was able to help me and that was shocking to me because seeing him go from like that state to that state in, in just two months was miraculous. So you don't hear about that in the world at all, you know? So 
I was just in awe. And then this made me just love God even more. And I'm like, wow, okay, this is miraculous. I need God and I, I need more of that. Um, but yeah, so our problem too was we had a lot of worldly vices and um, I was not able to give up any of them. I tried, I tried as hard as I physically could. I stopped smoking weed, stopped my pills, stopped cigarettes. I couldn't, I couldn't stop any of it, you know? So it was like we were seeking God, but at the same time, not fully. Um, if there's anything you want to add to. No, at that time, everything was compounding. Um, the spiritual attacks kind of diminished, but I think uh, the enemy kind of used that as his advantage, like not existing anymore. So I tried everything in, um, to make it work worldly wise. I figure if I have the right career, if I, you know, talk to certain people, if I, you know, set everything up for a life together, it would work. But um, unfortunately, or fortunately, that wasn't, you know, God's plan and timing was a little off. So it did not work out at that time. We actually went separate ways. It was about, what, five, six months that we were talking for a while. Yeah. And um, I went off, you know, for a couple of years to do my thing. And... Um, that actually prompted you to take a wonderful walk in the Christ. And I kind of yeah. paused for a while. I was just doing worldly things on and off. Um, I always never cursed God, never, you know, kind of just put him in the back burner, you know, turned away from him. He was always waiting for me to come back to him. But that's where I was. I was in that weird state for a couple of years. But that allowed you to transform yeah, so um, that's actually what brought me to Christ. Like when people ask me my testimony, I cannot share my testimony without talking about him as he is a large, large, large part of it. And I think that if that never happened four years ago, I would either not believe in God at all or I'd be believing in God the way that I did before, which was just word of mouth and then living a completely different life that looks no different than the world. Um, or even worse, like I was just getting worse and worse and worse, like I said, addiction and all of these things and, and demons and just really dark and hard times. But and after seeing this, I didn't wake up like instantly. Um, it took about another six months to a year. But after seeing this, I could never forget what I had seen or what I had also experienced myself at this time. There was a lot of demonic stuff that went on in my life and it was just, it was real. And I knew it was real. And I knew uh, the only solution to that was Christ. And that's what we had both seen. I had seen it in him. I had seen it in myself that Jesus is the only one that can help you with that kind of stuff. So I'd never been able to forget about that. And it's, there was a shift that happened. I went from like barely ever talking about God and talking, to, talking about God all the time. You know, it was still wrong because I was still like on drugs, preaching Jesus to people. But I started preaching Jesus to people, you know, and I would tell people what happened, like with our story, what happened with me. And, you know, people were really interested in that kind of stuff. Um, so that opened a whole doorway um, to God coming into my life. And eventually I did end up surrendering my life to Christ and getting baptized. And um, I've been sober for three years and all of that, you know, so that's amazing, and I'll get into that another time, but, <laughs> um, so yeah, him, God used to lead me to Christ, which is amazing, and that makes this even more special, because here he is again, so fast forward, um, four years, we had talked on and off, and I mean really, really, really sporadically, um, over the four years that had gone by, um, I felt prompted to reach out to him like two years ago, but I never, um, or I did, but it never really went anywhere. Um, yeah, you were in Christ and I kind of was worldly. So how do you always put it that someone else was there? Yeah. Or like you were trying to talk to me, but someone was in the room. So it wasn't like fully me. I yeah. just attribute that to just my worldly ways and, and didn't sin. Yeah. And the enemy trying to resist you. Yeah. yeah. So it was hard trying to talk to him because... <laughs> because of that well, in general it's hard <laughs> <laughs> yeah true no but <laughs> no so yeah so I had reached out to him but I was kind of like discouraged because it just seemed like he was still stuck where he was before um and this was really sad to me and I was like oh you know and I really had wanted him out of it I wanted to see him free but 
yeah, so, um, four years had gone by, and I thought this was done and over completely. Um, I thought that God just used it to bring me to Christ, and then to open his eyes to things, too, and I thought that was the end of that book. Like, I thought that was just completely closed and done. But God had other plans, and he shocked me with this completely, and, like, the timing was just, like, out of nowhere, pretty much, and that's kind of how God works. Like, I've been waiting to find my person for, like, three years. Like, since I was born again, I'm like, where's my husband? You know, silly. But that's how it was, and I feel like every time I thought there was something, it wasn't, and then God just out of nowhere did it, you know, in his perfect timing, not in my timing, not by my own plans or my own strength, but all of him. So, um, this all started, I had a dream, um, back in the fall and it was just of my family and his family, him included. And we all were at my parents' house and everyone was so happy. Like my dad was there and he was like cooking dinner and he was just smiling. And then his dad and his stepmom were there and they were just smiling and laughing. And then I was sitting on um, this couch in my living room with him and then his brother. And we were just talking about God. It was just literally like 10 seconds, five, 10 seconds. But I saw that and I just knew we were all of one accord and we were all like in Christ. Like I just, I knew that from the dream. And then you know, we, us three were talking about God and then I woke up and then the next day my mom was like, oh, his dad is getting married and we're going to his wedding in two weeks. And I'm like, what? And, and I didn't share the dream. And then that prompted her to say that. No, like she just said it the next day. And then I'm looking at her like this and she's like, what? And I'm like, I just had a dream about them, you know, and I hadn't talked to him in so long, like at least a year, year and a half. So he wasn't even on my mind like that at all, or his family. So that was completely out of nowhere. And that was, um, that was number one thing that made me go, hmm, <laughs> like what? And then, um, I, I knew that, uh, I had to go to the wedding. I got so excited because I'm like, okay, I had that dream. And then the next day, so I'm like, okay, that's cool. God's going to do something. And then, um, I actually, the day before the wedding, I didn't sleep at all, and I didn't want to go, and I asked God, like, I was doubting, I'm like, I'm so tired, like, maybe I just won't go, so I asked God to show me if I should go or not, God confirmed that I should go, so I'm like, okay, and then I'm all excited, I'm like, okay, something's gonna happen, like, maybe I'll get to, like, share, like, the gospel with one of them or something, but that didn't happen. So you can share about the wedding and how you felt and everything. Um, I was kind of autopilot at that time. Um, I was coming out of a fog. I was still worldly in my heart. I knew I had to get back into God, but I didn't know how. So I was just being there for my dad, being supportive. Um, he was marrying for the right reasons. He wanted to get right with God. It was um, him and my stepmom had been together for over 20 years. So just uh, everything worked out. But, um, yeah, I was just running around trying to be there for him, and then I get a tap on my shoulder, and uh, I see her, and just all at once, all these uh, emotions and thoughts came over me, like, um, just I wasn't happy where I wanted to be, so I was just kind of putting over a smile, but I think what the first thing I said was, uh, you asked me how I was doing, I was like, oh, kind of not really that good, all these things have happened since I've last seen you, I didn't expect to be so honest with you not that I'm a dishonest person I just had I was just prompted just to open up to you and um it was really brief it was about two three minutes and I got pulled off a different direction because it was a wedding I was I had help with uh setting up um them walking down the aisle but um yeah after that I was kind of avoided you in a way I just didn't know how to uh approach you he you know? totally avoided me <laughs> yeah but it just it just stirred up like I said obviously a lot of emotions because we did try to make things work but just the spiritual aspect too you know it was it was really heavy and complex our relationship and I attributed it to that spiritual side of me and and God so it's just everything hit at that time but yeah that was that was something else yeah and I had gone home that day and I didn't think anything of anything really. I mean, kind of emotionally was a little like, huh? And questioning God of like, what, like, what was the dream? And then nothing happened. So mm -hmm. I was kind of like disheartened and confused. Um, but yeah, so I didn't really know what to think. 
and nothing came of that or anything initially at all and I didn't like feel a certain kind of way then at all either. I didn't know what God was doing. I just was confident he was doing something because the timing of that dream and the wedding was no coincidence when it says don't exist in Christ. And that was so, that was just, it was weird. So I'm like, okay, this is something, but I don't know what the something is. So then, um, it was like a month later, um, God started speaking more and giving me more dreams and visions of things. And, um, this was surreal to me. So I'll start with, um, the first dream that I had that was the longest one. Um, I won't get in detail completely here. I'll just sum it up. But basically the dream was, it was, I was at this like wedding and, um, I don't know whose wedding it was. I don't know where, um, it was either, but I didn't know anyone there. I was alone and I'm like walking around outside of this beautiful building and then I see Tim there. And, um, I was all excited because he was the only person I knew and, and there was someone I knew finally. I'm like, oh, yay. So I go up to him and then he starts, um, acting off like how he used to be four years ago, like something spiritually was really wrong. And so then I reached my hand out to him and I said, like, I'll help you just follow me. So then we walked hand in hand throughout the entirety of the dream and it was like, this slow progression of him getting better and better and better the more that he walked with me. Um, so, and there's a little more to it, but like I said, just to sum it up, that is what happened. And then I woke up from that dream and I just felt all of these emotions. It was like every feeling that I had felt for him four years ago was back completely. And, and I cried that whole day because I just, in the dream, I saw this brokenness in him and I saw how hurt he was and I saw like spiritually something was wrong so I just cried for an entire day and like I'm not exaggerating when I said that like literally the entire day I was so sad and crying and I just wanted to help him but I didn't know how I didn't have any contact information for him I didn't I didn't know what to do but I just felt a prompting and, and more so than a prompting like an urgency to reach out and, but at the same time, I also was thinking this is just me and I'm being weird and I'm adding my own understanding to things somehow or whatever. Um, so yeah, or I also was like, oh, well, maybe it's the devil. Like, I just got to be really careful with everything. So I was prayerfully, uh, waiting on what to do and seeking God on all of this. And I feel like God just kept confirming, kept confirming, kept confirming more and more and more. You need to reach out to him and you need to do it now. Like, it was, like, a, a strong sense of urgency and to do it when I did it. So, I ended up doing that um, a little bit after that. And then God had shown more things and spoke more things. And it was just miraculous, all the confirmations. Um, so, I ended up uh, reaching out to his mom, asking for his number, which that was really embarrassing for me. I'm kind of, like, a person that doesn't do those kind of things at all. Um... And, you know, like, when it's, like, an ex or someone you had a past with, there's, like, that pride there, which pride is completely wrong, but being open, there's pride there. And so I was, like, oh, no. And then there's also the devil, like, saying, like, oh, he hates you. Like, he doesn't want to hear from you. He was avoiding you at the wedding because he hates you. <laughs> like, all these things. So I'm, like, oh, my gosh, I can't do this. So I was talking with a friend and he was just encouraging me and he was sure it was God. And I'm like, okay. So I was like, God, I want specific confirmations. Like I was in the middle of a prayer actually and God interrupted me. I was praying about something else. And then I heard um, to text his mom at 4 p.m. the following day. And I'm like, that's really specific. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. I was literally praying about something else. So I'm like, okay. Well, you're going to have to confirm that to me, God, because I really don't want to do this. Like, I didn't want to do it, but I, I really, I didn't also want to do it. Nothing against you. I just, I didn't want to. <laughs> so, the next day, I'm like, okay, God, I want you to confirm the 4 p.m. And I want to see a 4 p.m. somewhere. I don't want to see a 4. Like, I want to see a 4 p.m. in my newsfeed. I don't want to see it 
um, with like, okay, post it at 4 p.m. And I don't want to see just a 4. I want to see a specifically 4 p.m. And I was kind of hoping I would get out of this by praying this also. Because I'm like, that's not going to happen. I don't see times in the news feeds. People don't post 4 p.m., 3 p.m. They don't, they don't do that. You know, so I was like, okay, I'm going to get out of it. Because, haha, it's not going to be there. God's not going to confirm it. Because that wasn't God. I was wrong. But then I go on my feed. And then literally like 10 minutes after saying that prayer, I'm like on my feed. And then I see someone like saying that they're going to list something for sale at 4 p.m. And I'm like. <laughs> I texted my friend, I'm like, no, I'm like, this just happened. And then he's just laughing because he's like, I knew it was God the whole time. And I'm like, okay. And then for like an hour, he's like, did you text her yet? Did you text his mom yet? I'm like, no, I'm shaking. <laughs> I'm like so nervous. And then he actually, my friend comes over from work and then is like helping me. I had texted his mom. She gave me his number. And I'm like panicking. I'm like, I can't, I can't text him yet. So, but I finally do, and then my friend actually took my phone and hit the send button for me, and God bless him, because I couldn't. I was literally shaking. I was so nervous. So stupid, but I was so nervous. And, um, yeah, then it took him, like, an hour to text back, which was, like, an hour of crisis for me. So, I was trying to talk to my friend, but I'm like, sorry, Dominic, like, I can't talk right now. We need to just pray and stay in prayer. And he's like, oh, that's fine. So we just prayed the entire time. And then it was like when I finally gave it to God and surrendered the worry, it was in that moment that my phone went off. It was like after I like said that, my phone literally dinged right then and there. So I'm like, that's really cool. And that shows you when you let go and just let God, that's when things start to happen. But anyway, so yeah, I texted him and then um, I, I just asked how he was doing. I spent like an hour because I knew my mom messaged me. She's like, did you have make any plans with Katie beforehand? I'm like, no, what do you mean? She's like, well, when you saw her at the wedding. I'm like, no. I'm like, why? She's like, well, she <laughs> messaged me. So I knew that you were gonna within the next couple days. But yeah, I just stared at the phone for an hour. I didn't know what to say. But I just, you know, it was everything started coming back up again. What well, was going through your mind? Like... Um, I just had, I didn't know what to think really, um, but I was just being led, uh, I know I was being led by God just to, um, you know, view it as one of the great opportunity to get back into the spirit. I know I had feelings for you romantically from four years ago, but, um, I just knew that I had to put that aside and I knew that you were deep into Christ and I also, furthermore, that I needed to get back into Christ and you were that door. So I know just just take this opportunity and to learn as much as I could from you. Um, little did I know that this would come about. So, I mean, hard not to see it coming. But yeah, at that time, I, I was purely innocent. I, I wanted to get back into, into God. Yeah. And I didn't know what he was thinking at all. I actually, we had a good conversation that night and then... Um, his texting back started to get really slow and then that left room for the devil to be like, hey, he hates you. And so I was like panicking again and then I was texting my friend Dominic. I'm like, Dominic, I'm freaking out. I can't do this. Like, this is just so much. And I'm not one to persist. Like, if someone doesn't text me back or something, I don't like double texting. I've never liked that. I don't think anyone does. So I just was, like, so uncomfortable with doing that. But I really felt, like, again, a prompting and an urgency from the Spirit of God to just keep uh, reaching out to Him and that God was going to do something. I didn't know it was anything romantic, and I wasn't even thinking that at that point at all. I was just thinking strictly about helping him and about helping him find Christ. And I, I thought that's all there was to it. That's it. Um, so yeah, uh, we just continued talking for a few days and I had asked him if he wanted to call and talk and, um, you can take over. No, he kept asking me, um, where I was, um, what my beliefs were, if I still believed in God, if I wanted to get back into God and and how I was with Christ, and I think I just remember, I remember telling you that, um, I was kind of, you know, in defense mode, I was reverting back to my shell, I didn't want anything in the past to bubble up, um, I was kind of living in fear in spirituality, I, I was stable, and I wanted to stay stable, and I was worldly stable, so that's, I was just holding on to just, oh, if I work, you know, if I focus on family and work, everything will be fine. I didn't want to extend on my needs, and I didn't want to walk down any path of spirituality at that time. But 
as I told you, I knew it was the right thing to do. And so that's why it was, it was, it was odd timing, but I knew deep down in my heart and my mind that that was the right thing to do and that it was from God and I should continue to, you know, pick up that phone, you know, and keep messaging you and keep talking to you and build something special. Oh, yeah, I, again, I didn't really know what he was thinking, um, for weeks, actually, <laughs> and, um, so during this time, God was speaking more as we were speaking, and I was hearing something over and over, and I was hearing, um, do you remember what I showed you long ago, and I'm like, because mm, every time I would hear that, I would see a vision that God gave me four years ago, which was him and I holding hands. We were like on a stage, like at a church or somewhere, just hand in hand sharing our testimonies. And every time I would hear, do you remember what I showed you long ago? I would see that. And I heard that time and time again. And I'm like, no, like I just must be adding my own understanding and being weird and like hoping for something or like the devil's just playing on emotions and, and just trying to distract me. Like, I just was like, no, like, this can't be because X, Y, Z. Like, just all these things. And I'm, I'm just in disbelief at that point of that. Um, but then I get on TikTok and I'm just going live and I'm just talking and I'm talking about what's going on in my life and about how God keeps saying something that I don't really understand. And I didn't even elaborate on the fact that I was having a vision with, um, do you remember what I showed you long ago? I didn't say what I saw. I didn't get into Tim or anything. I didn't want to. I wanted just to talk vaguely and, and I felt prompted to go live too. Like I felt like God tell me to go live and I, I didn't even know why. Like I got on there. I'm like, guys, I don't know why I'm on here, but God wants me on here. So I just felt like I just started talking about that, and I started talking about that, and then there was this guy on there who started encouraging me and praying over me, and I was amazing, and then he gets off, he says, good night, I'm getting off, and um, maybe we'll talk again. So that was the end of that, and then 10 minutes later, he comes back on, and he's like, I was just going to sleep, but I just shot up out of my bed because I feel like God's going to do something so great in your life, and he wants me back on here for a reason. So we start praying and we pray for revelation on, um, what, uh, I was hearing. And then God just gives this man words of wisdom, like crazy and words of knowledge that he could not have known without God. And he starts saying, um, all of these things like saying, you know, th there's a guy that God had shown you, or spoke to you about and it's someone you grew up with and like all these things and then he starts detailing this vivid memory I have which is me as a child like I don't know how old but young praying in my bed in the dark at nighttime praying that when I get older that I would end up with him and this guy details that in depth like to the to a T like describing exactly how I saw it in my mind and he's seeing it and I'm like what the heck like this is bizarre and so why it even was more bizarre was what I said to God my whole walk with Christ was that when I meet the person that is my person that I'm going to be with forever please send a stranger to confirm it someone who's unbiased someone that doesn't know anything about the situation someone that will not be swayed by flesh but will just be swayed by your spirit and your spirit alone. Um, and, you know, some people think this is too hard, but nothing is too hard for God. But before I could even ask God to do that, God did it in this situation. So I'm just like in awe. And I was already in awe for like weeks about what God was doing, but this just had me on my face and just in awe of God and crying before him and just thanking him and praising him. And I'm like, this is crazy. Um... And yeah, so this is like only a week after we had started talking too. So I'm just like, God, this is amazing. And yeah, and I'm just like on TikTok as well. Like when I was live, I was just like red faced because this guy was just like, yeah, like you were praying when you were young um, for this, this guy you grew up with, someone you were close to, to be your husband. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. God, what are you doing? <laughs> 
you know, and then there's people watching the live and they're like, whoa, you know, so this is just this is all crazy. Um, but yeah, then after that, God gave me more things and more visions. He showed me a beautiful vision of, um, him, this, he had pimples on his face. It was just like five seconds and pimples on his face. And then I was, um, like to my knee, on my knees next to him with a cloth and wiping them off. And then afterwards I was in prayer for like an hour. And then at the end of the prayer, I asked God for a word, not even on the vision, but just in general. And then he gave me, um, I think it's in Job, um, where it says they shall be without blemish or something. I can't remember the exact verse, but it was like about blemishes and about being clean of them and, and no more. And I was like, oh my gosh, like you're, this is crazy. Like it's confirming the vision I had. I wasn't even asking you to do that, but he just did it. So and that involves a lot of, or that explains a lot of what happened over those, that period of time. It was like, I didn't even ask God to do it. He was just doing it, um, which is amazing and so crazy and so beautiful. Um, and then I had this other vision. Um, wait, before I get into that, is there anything you want to share about that period? Um, just a little, like at that time, God just kept taking every fear that I had away, all the anxiety and just, um, just to take it head on not to say no um i'm getting a little ahead but um you asked me to join fellowship you asked me to start praying and um you know usually i would have said no or would deflect it or would divert it it was something very spiritual that led me to say yes it wasn't wasn't like i had to think on it i just said yes you know i i left through my hands up and i that time i started to slowly surrender yeah and that was beautiful seeing how receptive he was which that was so different than in the past um and it was just like talking to him now it wasn't this other thing there um and he was just hearing the word of god and we were reading every single day on video chat for at least an hour every single day which was just miraculous and then god gave me this beautiful vision while i was in prayer and i wasn't even asking for a vision or no i wasn't in prayer i was in worship i was listening to a worship song um, that my friend Gabby sent me and I was just worshiping and just really getting into the spirit. And then I have this miraculous vision. It was again, quick, but so powerful. So it was me and I was, um, standing in my room, um, where I was praying, but I could see it like outside, like third person and I could see myself and I was standing there, but I was like me at like 15, 16, like high school age. And then I saw all these doors and behind every door was a guy that I had dated in that time of my life. So like middle school through high school. And then all of a sudden these doors all closed. And then I'm looking like confused, like looking like this and also sad, you know, and just disheartened. And like, why does this keep happening? Like, why does every door keep shutting? And then I see myself standing in the same spot, but it's it's present me at my age now and in Christ. And then I see another set of doors and then these doors open and then behind them are like every guy that I had um, either tried talking to or how I dated while I've been in Christ. But then again, um, they this time they smile and wave and then the door shuts. And then I'm again standing there and I'm not really as disheartened this time but more so confused and just like why does this keep happening like why does every door I try to walk into relationship wise keep going like this and shutting and then it was like um, God just took his hands and directed my face the opposite way and then to that side of me there was this like mirror um, but like to the future kind of thing and it was like all white around it and like glowing and then I couldn't go through it but I could look into it and it was um, me and Tim sitting next to each other and we were hand in hand and we were sitting by a beautiful bank of water and it was like surreal um, water like so beautiful and we were just sitting there and I think we might have had the Bibles in our laps or something but we were just smiling and so happy and I knew we were together, you know? And so without words, it was like God had said, this is why every door had closed because you were looking in the wrong direction the whole time. And the whole time I had something planned for you. And that's why I shut every other door is because that wasn't what I had for you. 
but he is what I have for you and what I had for you since the beginning and all of what happened four years ago and even more than that, even when I was a kid, all of it was just leading the way and paving the path for this very thing to happen. So I was absolutely on my face again after I saw that, just crying and just worshiping God, praising God, like, oh my gosh. And lo and behold, he didn't know about any of this. He didn't know like mm-hmm. I was saying any of this. He didn't know that I was feeling this way or yeah, I don't anything. Think I found out. You told me until at least a month or two after. Mm-hmm. Until we started recap the recap phase after we finally started. Yeah. Seeing each other again. Mm-hmm. So you could share that part if you want of like how that started because it started on Christmas Eve, um, when you said something about well, everything. Uh, um, we started being very receptive and uh, feelings started coming into play and uh but before that it was special too because we were genuinely you know being in christ together genuinely trying to look for god and and then the emotions started coming and so i just embraced them and it it was kind of like one of them things where like oh yeah so we're dating right and that was on (laughs) that was on christmas and you know it was really surreal for me i you know thought nothing but the best of you I, i i looked up to you in that way um, I knew it was just so, it was just surreal for me. Yeah, it was crazy, and I was just like, oh my gosh, when I found out, like, that he felt the same way, and, yeah, I just was, like, in awe of God, and I knew it was gonna happen because I knew, um, what God was speaking. I knew it was from God because there was just so much, like, there's more that I'm not sharing right now, too, just to keep it somewhat summed up, but God was just saying so much, and I'm like, okay, well, I know this is going to happen. I just don't know when. And I did not think it was this soon. I thought, you know, he's speaking this um, in advance, you know, so it's going to happen in the future at some point, but I don't know when. Um, But God just was moving and moving, moving and doing so much and working in him and working in me and teaching us both a lot and just growing us closer and closer. And we really, we... We got so close so quickly. Like, yeah, we've known each other our whole lives. And, yeah, we had a past four years ago of being together. But it was just, like, a whole different thing. Like, it felt different for me. And I just felt so comfortable with you. And it just felt like no time had passed at all. And, like, it just always was that way. Um, So that was really special. Um, But, yeah, like he said, I invited him to a fellowship. And we started going to that together. And it was just really nice seeing him. Uh, again and everything and I was just so taken back at the transformation because like I said in those two or three years before we started reconnecting I really didn't um, follow your page I kind of just went my own way so to see the transformation in which you went through was astounding I know the dedication that I saw that you had in Christ like Christ first no matter what you waited on everything, like even what to do that very day. You prayed and then waited. That that even now is something that I adore you, I admire you. It's that trait that, that just makes me want to know more and, and love you even more. It's it was astounding and it was inspiring and it's one of the main reasons why, you know, I decided to go to the you asked me to go to fellowship, I was like, Yeah, sure, let's go. You asked me to do this, I was like, Yeah, sure and then um, you know, you kept noting because we were together, I didn't even wanna kiss you because I just felt I just felt so different you know I was putting those worldly things were just dying and I was shedding skin so fast and um that's why I had the chance to get baptized and I did so and it was it was miraculous and you can share about that um it happened at at, yeah (laughs) it happened at um at the fellowship we had um I was very lucky it was uh two weeks I had some people that, that took my hand. Um, I was able to repent for about an hour or two beforehand, and it was a good group. My family was there, my mom and my aunt, and I got baptized in the middle of the winter in a hot tub with someone else. Um, there was speaking in tongues, and when I was during my baptism, I didn't start speaking in tongues right away um, like some people do, but as they were praying over me, as I went under and came up and my old self died, I felt two things start to develop, my old self and something new, and as they started praying over me, that old person, that old thought, like all the fear, anxiety, all those old behaviors that I had, I felt it vanish, almost just just separate from me, 
And ever since then, I felt lighter and um, I felt cleaner. And it's something totally amazing. Um, it's a wonderful thing. Everything how it coalesced, I couldn't, I couldn't want it more. But that's how it started was that baptism. And um, ever since then, we've been hitting the word, me and her. And uh, it was a miraculous transformation in me. It's just, we ping pong. You know, four years ago, you know, I, I saw her. It you know, had a lasting impression. You want on your transformation. I went back to worldly things. You transformed and then brought that fire of Christ back into my life. My light lit up, and now here we are. It's just, it's, it's all God's timing, and it was a wonderful thing. Yes, yes. I didn't hear everything you were talking about. So, <laughs> um, our fellowship, how my baptism transformed myself, and how after I came out of that water, I just had an eagerness for the Word, and um, I never spoke in tongues before. You started to, and then that's when our relationship really, literally took off. We got really intimate. Yeah. Like with the with the Lord and um also I uh I don't know, I, at that time I had I had no clue where I was gonna go but I started getting promptings of, of marriage to do things right and everything was falling off me, so if you wanna take over there. Yeah, okay, so that was back in February, which oh that's something too. So a year and a half ago now, or even close to two years, um, I heard randomly while I was fasting and I wasn't even in prayer like I think it was just randomly I heard February 12th I heard that so clear so clear and then we were on video call and then he was saying that his sobriety date was February 12th and I almost just lost it right then and there because this was already like God had been speaking all these things to me he didn't know yet at this point so when he said that I'm like God, there's already been 50 things, pretty much, and this is just another one, and this is even more miraculous, because I had been waiting to, like, find out the meaning of February 12th for, like, so long at this point, and I had no idea, um, what it had meant. I knew it was from the Lord, I just was confident that it was, um, but I just didn't know what. And then when he said that, I'm like, okay, that's, like, the last confirmation that I need if I even needed another one. So I was just, wow. Um... So yeah, that was really cool. And then we just started getting closer and closer and, and our relationship progressed really quickly because like most of the time I was slow with things because I wanted to be sure that it was God, you know, but at this point I was already sure and he was sure too. If you want to share anything about how you felt and how you knew um, or whatnot. Um, I just knew that you were kind of the one um, it happens so quick when you know, you know. Um, I was getting word every day almost, even now, like, uh, it's been miraculous, but, um, yeah, what was it, uh, I kept getting visions and dreams of water, and I didn't know how I was feeling, and then I was kind of, like, bouncing off you, we were reading the word every day, and, um, at first you brought marriage up and I thought you were crazy. I didn't know how it would work. We both, I was living in my own apartment. You were still living at home. Um, I knew it was only about two months that we were seeing each other, but we wanted to be right in Christ. We didn't want to tempt each other and wanted to, um, we both knew. And it was so wild how we were on the same page and how God was there. So at that time, um, we were hanging out and um, I just knew I had to go by water. So I led you to a bridge and then it was like God just pushed down on my shoulders and I got down on one knee and uh, I didn't have no plan I just knew it was right and um I proposed and I think you kind of knew it was coming no I did not I swear I you did did not he swears I knew I was in shock like I didn't foresee that especially that day I had no idea he like looked at me he's like oh my heart's racing I'm like, I just look at him confused. I'm like, are you okay? Like, are you okay, honey? I don't understand. And then before he can even answer me, he's just like all nervous. And then he asked me again. I just, I was in shock. I'm like, what? You know, because I thought, okay, I was totally okay with, with that. But I thought that he was thinking, you know, more time, more time, like wait, because, you know, worldly circumstances and factors, you know, that a lot of people think about before they got married, before they get engaged, anything like that, so, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, 
So, then you can keep going after what happened after that. Um, it was a uh, weird circumstances, um, financially, um, where we were at, you know, how our families were coming together is, um, it was pretty much in a month and a half, I got baptized, we got engaged, and we started looking for an apartment. And we had a lot of factors, a lot of things and obstacles in our way. And we just kept putting God first. Um, we uh, followed his word almost to a T. And that's why I'm so like thankful. And I knew it was all right because, not that I should look to you, but I saw how fierce you were putting Christ first. And I know that was in my heart and knew that was right. And so I looked to the word, I looked to my heart and I was just praying and, and God answered, you know, we, I, I needed help. And I, I needed, you know, first I didn't even have at that time, I was in between jobs. I didn't have a job. I had no vehicle. I really, the apartment I was at, didn't have no room for her. And um, in that month and a half, I had the resources um, through my proposal to not only um, have family help to marry you, but to find an apartment, to find a job, to help with my outpatient, for everything to get settled in the way it did. There's no other explanation but that it was from God and is from God. And it was the most beautiful thing that has happened to me and is the transformation has been vivid. And, you know, at, at first I was kind of being led by the fellowship in you and now, you know, we kind of took your hand and now I'm leading you and it's been, it's been amazing. You know. Yeah, it's surreal, and the timing was surreal. I actually thought he was a little crazy at first when he was he gave a date uh, for us to get married and to dedicate ourselves to each other in front of the Lord, and I'm just like, uh, that's three weeks away, like, <laughs> from the time that he proposed. I'm like, that's three weeks. Like, I kind of, I kind of just been. I was actually the same mentality. I'm like, I don't know why, but. I just felt prompted to like you'll pretty much like the mentality I was getting was you'll find out later you'll find out just trust just have faith it'll make sense it'll make sense and um it did it, the way it worked out was tremendous you know financially and fiscally and just the logistics of it you know it it coalesced yeah you know and and now we're we're not living in sin and um we're talk. We're thinking about. <laughs> we're thinking about kids. We are taking it time by time. We're looking for a new fellowship, but um, living with Christ and living with God and finding that special someone is a beautiful thing. It's it's what God made us for. I believe one of the things um, it fulfills that void that I've been looking for for all my life. The reason why I kept reaching for things, be it be you know. Um, partying, you know, worldly things, sports, you know, entertainment. It's um, it was finding Christ and, you know, having that body of Christ, having that fellowship and meeting meeting someone that you love that's in Christ. And it's once you find that, you need nothing else, and everything starts to open up, and the important things really start to come alive. And I haven't had true happiness. I haven't had true peace, ever, ever. And uh, I wouldn't even imagine me sitting down in front of a phone doing this <laughs> at this time. No. But, you know, yeah. Yeah, and it's been beautiful. It's been surreal. The place that God provided for us is perfect. And we don't have a vehicle right now. And there's literally, like, I was hoping for one or two things to walk to and be able to walk to. But we have everything that we need. Uh, and abundantly so. Right five minutes down the road walking. And... It's just crazy. Like, it's literally everything that we would need and more. And then also the landlord absolutely loves him. We're getting help there because he's having him do stuff around the apartment. And it's just crazy. I'm like, God provided everything that we needed. And he did it in a way that was so miraculous. Like, down to every detail. Like, we were stressing and we were kind of, like, getting a little into the flesh with as far as worrying goes and, and stressing but God just did it, you know, like other places we applied to, we weren't hearing back from or it wasn't working out or we just didn't feel like it was the right way to go or there were things not around it. It wouldn't be feasible walking. So there was a lot of factors and with rent being so high right now too, like that was another factor. Like there was just so many factors that were just like stress and God provided everything and the owner of the place actually reached out to us and said like, I really liked you guys. Um, like I'll take this much off the rent. Like I really want you guys to be here, and we're just like, 
wait a second, <laughs> like, what is happening, you know, and it just, it just all was supernatural and beautiful, and it was, it was an intense trial, like, um, you know, I, not once did I want to question why I was doing the things, because I feel like I was just kind of pushing behind me, I was like, well, what if this, what if this happened, I just kind of stopped, I stopped with the what ifs, I put my full faith into, into Christ that I knew I was being led, you know, I kept steady in prayer, I kept steady in meditation, and just doing genuinely the right thing, and everything has worked out tremendously, there's been fruit already, and that's the biggest thing right now, is the provisions that we've been keep talking about in our conversation is the next step, what, what can we do if, if we have these fruits and we have these blessings, how do we, you know, give it back and how do we keep it going not to, you know, get complacent. And um, that's where we're at right now. And it's, it's been a journey. It's been quite the journey. Yeah, for sure. Lots of tests, lots of trials. It hasn't all been sunshine and rainbows along the way, but God's always met us with everything that we needed and more so, which has been a huge, huge blessing. There's still some obstacles that we're overcoming. Not, like, in our own lives, like, in pertaining to us, but in those around us. You know, every situation isn't perfect right now, but we're just trusting God with the rest and knowing that He will make a way, and even more so than that, that He will just use everything for His glory and for good. Um, so we're excited to see what else He's going to do, because this is still just the very beginning, and so much has already happened, and it's been such a huge blessing for both of us. And yeah, so that's our crazy story of what happened, you know, um, there's a lot to it. And again, I'm still kind of in awe and in shock of everything because I never foresaw this. Um, four years ago I did, but I had lost any hope for that. Um, as time progressed and, and went on, um, I just never could have foreseen this. Um, hindsight though, there's no one or nothing else I would have rather had literally from the beginning of my life. Like, I had always adored him. I had always wanted and hoped that it would be him. And how faithful is our God that he heard the prayers of a child or rather put it in me to have that desire because he knew who my husband would be from the very beginning. And yeah, I'm just so thankful that God had done this and lined everything up. Yeah. Stay faithful, stay genuine. Well, guys, um, that's our story. I will um, quickly go through the comments now and see if there's anything on here. Um, Very summarized story. I think we did a good job of covering. Well, I left some things out that are important, but crash course. Yeah, yeah, we'll be on here to share more in depth as well at some point. Um, and we'll even, we'll do some like Q&As. So if you guys have any questions for us, we'll do some videos like that. Where you guys can just interact with us and ask us questions and we'll answer you. And yeah, we just want to stay involved with you guys and get to know you all more. Um, but I'm going to end this video so I can just post this. So other people who weren't on here or weren't able to watch can go back and watch it. Um, and yeah, God bless all you guys. Thank you for listening and thank you for coming on here. And... God bless each and every one of you. Keep the faith. Yes. <laughs>